set of things called tags. And the tags indicate special meaning about what that content represents. There are then, you know, to go from there and to expand on that, of course, there's a whole bunch of tags. And there's some standard tags that are going to be on every page that you create. And there's going to be some tags that are going to be on most pages that you create and so on. But to represent every little piece of content, there's a tag for it. So let's look at the example that we were looking at last time, if I can find it. There's our page. If we look at the code, right mouse saying open with notepad, you don't have that option to open with notepad. You can go and you can start notepad and then do file, open, remembering to switch to all files from text document, and then selecting it and saving it. Now in this case, we have the basic tags which are the doc type, which really isn't a tag, it's a declaration. We have our HTML tag that indicates that this is an HTML document. We have the head section that includes information about the page. Um, right now, it's just going to be the title of the page that appears up in the address uh, bar, or, or rather the title bar. We then have the body, which is the main part of the page. And we had several tags here. We had an H1 tag to indicate a top level header. We had an article tag, H2, H3, paragraphs, and so on. Now we indicated that um, the, the tags that you put in uh, define the content of the page. It says what the content means. In other words, we use an H1 to indicate that it's a top level heading. Um, the question then is, is how does it get displayed the way it gets displayed? In other words, this being a top level heading, it appears differently than the second level and the third level heading. How your things look on the page are a combination of two things. One of those things are just the default of the browser, right? just the default browser behavior. And the second thing is a cascading style sheet language that you put on your page, which we'll be getting to. I don't know if we'll get to it today. If not, we will probably at least touch on it next time. All right, so that's how your page, that's how the browser knows what your page should look like. It takes the tags, all right, which define the meaning of the content, all right, and it applies then, it's a mix of your default, uh, or the browser's default behavior and your CSS code. Now, because we have no CSS code in here, all of this is a default browser behavior, all right? Another word, and if you think about it, a lot of the default browser behavior, you know, kind of makes sense. A, a top level heading ought to be bigger than a second level heading, and the second level heading ought to be bigger than a third level heading. And a paragraph ought to just be plain text, you know, with normal font size and so on. So the default behavior, you know, makes sense, all right? Now, we can change just about anything, in fact, Probably I would go so far as to say everything about the appearance of it through our CSS, but we're not going to do that right now. Our focus is on getting the HTML tags correct. Um, so what's our next challenge as far as this goes? Well, we have, we're going to go in two, two different directions today, two main topics. One is uh, another thing that tags can have, and that's called attributes. All right? And then we're just going to talk about more and more tags, all right? Uh, and then again, depending on time, we might get into some CSS stuff. All right. If I were to tell you, you know, hey, you know, can you really, you know, I'm, I'm in lab. Can you really do me a big favor? Can, can, you, can you go to my car and get out the, the big box of treats that I'm going to give my class today, all right, for showing up at lab and doing a great job, all right? If I were to tell you that, 
you'd have no idea how to execute that, right? Because you go out there in the parking lot, and there's hundreds of cars over there. So if I said go to my car, there's a good chance that, you know, unless you happen to see me drive in this morning, you'd have no idea where I was parked, what my car was, and, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to find it to get all the yummy treats. I don't have treats, by the way, for the folks in the online class, so you're not missing out on that. You, you have to supply your own treats if you want any, all right? What would I need to do so that you could go and do that? I need to give you some additional information, right? I could, I could tell you my license plate number. I could tell you the make and the model. I could tell you maybe what space the car was in. The bottom line is somehow one way, or I could describe the bumper stickers on the back, one way or another, it's not enough to, for me to say, go to my car. I would have to give you additional information, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it. All right? With HTML tags, that additional information uh, is expressed through what are called attributes. All right? Attributes are additional information about a tag. And we've already seen one instance of an attribute. Um, up here on the HTML tag. We have a lang attribute for language. And that simply indicates that my page is in English. And that will help um, search engines and so on uh, deal with this page. All right, so we've defined the language that this is. So we've given some extra information. Not only is this an HTML document, this is an HTML document whose content is in English. All right. Um, the, the next tag that we're going to look at is the link tag. And just as it's not enough for me to say, go to my car, it's not enough via a web page to say, go to this web page. I need to be specific about what web page I want you to go to. All right? I have to be specific to what is the address of the page that I want this link to be for. Now, there's a couple different kinds of links that you can have. You can link to a, a few different things. You could link to another page on the Internet. Like we could make a, pay, a, a link from our page to go out to Google if we wanted to. I could make a link to another one of my own pages. So the first thing I could do is I could make a link to some other page out on the Internet that isn't mine. I could make a link to one of my own other pages, a page that I've created, and finally I can actually make a link within my page to sort of allow the person to navigate within the page. So we'll look at all three kinds of links, uh, probably today, uh, but definitely over the next class or two we'll, we'll examine all three kinds of links. So let's start out with a link to another page on the internet. In other words, a page that I didn't create. Um, Probably a more precise way to say it is a web page that is on some other web server. It's somewhere out on the internet. It's not associated with my page. So let's say I want to make a link to Google on this page. I'll put a paragraph at the bottom of the page that says, for more information, use Google. Not a terribly useful link, right? Because, you know, gee, if you need more information, what are you going to do? You probably are going to go to Google already, right? But hey, what the heck? You know, we got to start somewhere. Now, right now, this isn't a link, right? It's the word Google, but browser doesn't know that you mean you want a link to Google. You have to tell it that. All right? So if we were to display this right now, you know, it's just going to look like every other word on the page. For more information, use Google. Absolutely nothing happens when we click on it. It's like any other page. We need to make it a link. Now, the tag for a link is the A tag. And A stands for anchor. All right? And 
talk a little bit about why they call it that, but it isn't that interesting, I guess. So just remember that a link is an A tag. All right. Now I'm leaving some space here after I put the A tag. And then I'll put the end A tag after the word Google. What that means is everything between the start and end A tag will be the word that you'll click on to go to Google. All right. In other words, in this case, to go to Google, you click on the word Google, period. All right, anywhere on that word. And the way I have it typed right now, the period is part of the link. So even if I click on the period, I'll go to Google. You know, I could move that period outside of the A tag, and then it won't be part of the link. Now, what we have at this point is the equivalent of me saying, go to the parking lot and go to my car, right? We have the A tag, which indicates that we want to send the user to another web page, but we haven't defined what the name of the web page is that we want to send them to. So this is incomplete. We need additional information for this to work because there are billions of web pages out there. Which one are we linking to? All right. The attribute that controls what page we're linking to is the href attribute. rearranging of this code here. Remember, I can code this any way that I think is readable with any kind of white space in there. So I'm going to do what's going to make this readable and understandable for this class. I think I have an extra end paragraph tag. All right, so here's my link tag. A, so that means we have a link. What is the link to? Well, we have to specify the href attribute. So I say href equals http colon slash slash google.com. All right, because that's the URL. Um, URL stands for Universal Resource Locator, I think. All right. That's the URL of our web page. That's the address or name of our, or address is probably a better way to put it, of our web page. So that's included as the href attribute. Now let's look at this attribute, because all attributes fit this pattern. All right? The name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then enclosed in quotes is the value of the attribute. So href is the specific attribute, and we have to call it that, you know, these are fixed, these are, these are predefined, href equals, and then in quotation marks we put the address of the web page that we're interested in. The address, if we're talking about going to an external web page, that is someone else's web page, a web page that lives on another server, we need to include that HTTP in there. A real common mistake is to forget the HTTP and then it, it, the, the, the browser isn't sure, it thinks that that page is one of your pages and then it can't find it and it complains about it. So you need to put the HTTP in. Now I know a lot of people have, you know, get lazy because the browser does some work for you. So for example, if you go here up into the browser and just type in google.com, It brings it up for you automatically. All right. So without, or if I go to Yahoo, I don't have to type in HTTP yahoo.com. It takes me there. But, When you go to put it in your code, you need to put the HTTP in front of it. In fact, notice when I pasted it, even though the HTTP didn't display, 
it's considered to be part of it. All right. Usually what I do if I, create, if I want to create a link is I'll go to that page. Let me create another link here. If I want to go to, let's say, the page about, um, you know, our, our gym here. We'll go to student life. All right. If I wanted to link to our student life page, I would go to that page in my browser and then do a copy, control C, copy it, and then go and paste that. as part of the href. And notice when you paste it, it paste it, it's kind enough for you to kind enough to Let me go in and turn the wrap around off. All right. A href equals HTTP, and there's the address. So bring up the page in the browser, go up to the address line, copy, then go and paste it in the href. Do be sure, though, that if you're going to a page outside on the internet, that you include the HTTP in front of it. So this recipe I'm giving you here is a recipe for going to another page out on the internet that's not one of your pages. So now, when I go and display this page, you'll notice a couple of things. We have our two pages, all right? that are linked, and notice the links are purple. Let's go and add another link in here. to a music site. Notice that this link is blue. These links are magenta. What's the difference between those links? Why do they display differently? I've been to those two links. So the links that I visited are magenta. The links that I uh, have not yet visited are uh, in blue. All right, that's default browser behavior. All right, that's defined somewhere in the properties of your browser, and someone could change it, but no one in the world ever has gone and changed their defaults. All right, for typically, uh, blue underlined is a link. Uh, magenta is a visited link. Now we can change that if we want to. Let's say, for example, the background color of our page is blue. Right? A blue link on a blue background isn't going to look very good, right? Well, we'd want to change then the link to a color that you could read. All right? How do you do that? You do that via CSS. All right? If I now go and visit this page, one thing I didn't know if you noticed real quick is I put my mouse on it and started to click it, it flashed red very quickly. But now, if we go and look at it, it's magenta just like the other one is. There's, I, as I press my mouse down, it actually changes red. And now when I go back to the page, that link is magenta, because I have visited that page. All right? So whenever you have a link, 
you need an attribute, and you typically need an href attribute to say where you're going to. All right, what is the name of the page on the internet? If it is, again, not your page, but someone else's on a different web server, it needs to start with HTTP. All right, and that href, that isn't a tag, it isn't the href tag, it's an attribute of the link tag, it's more information. Just like, you know, if I were to say, go to my car, you need more information about it. It's still the same car, but I need to define some information. Well, this is still a link tag, but I need to define the more information of what the address is of the page that I want to go to. Um, Questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, let's go and take a look. Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. In other words, I can mix text, plain text, and links just by doing it this way. The stuff that's within the A tag is the link part of it. The other stuff is the text. So like for example, you know, notice that link to isn't a link. Alright? Why? Because link to isn't part of the A tag not between the start and end A tag. But the letters ECM are, the letters LCCC Student Life are, the letters Google are. Now, uh -huh. right. if, if I put the words link to ECM in there, then, then that is the full text of the link. And that will be what will be either blue or underlined or magenta and underlined. Now, a few things about, um, notice again, and here's a good example of this. Google, the word Google, notice what the link for that is. The link includes actually the period. Might be a little hard to see. There we go. The word, the Google is part of that. Also, a space is part of the link, too. So, um, whatever is enclosed in the A tag will be part of the link. Oops. All right. Now, one thing you notice, you've got to be careful for, is notice that LCC Student Life and Link to ECM runs into each other. In other words, the link for LCC Student Life is immediately followed by the link to ECM. It's kind of hard to see what the link is for that. So you want to make sure that you put some sort of, of space or characters between them. That's why I did link to and then that, link to and then that. That broke up the link. Because the way it looks now, it looks like this is just one giant link, when in reality it's actually two links. So let's go and fix that. Now if we do this, it is much clearer that that's actually two links. We have that and we have that. All right, so that's how to link to an outside page. All right, to link to one of our own pages our assumption is going to be that the page is in the same folder as the page that we're talking about. So let's say I'm going to have a page here, and I'm going to put it in the same folder. All right. Later on in class, we'll talk about what if you want to put them in different folders. Because just like you organize your files on, on your computer between you know, maybe your business work files, your home files, your school files, you can uh, organize your web pages in a similar way, similar way in their own directories. But for now, we're going to assume everything's in the one directory. All right. So I'm going to make a second web page. And because I am not clever at all, I'm going to call this second. 
and I'm going to go in and edit this, and I'm just going to put a H1 that says second page and get rid of everything else. So I'm going to be very lazy with this. So if I want to link to that other page, all right, this other page is my page. It's in the same folder as this first example. So I don't need to put in HTTP blah, 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 blah. I can just put in the file name. So I could put in here link to my second page and I can say a href equals and just the name of the page. Again, there's no HTTP because I don't have to like go to another server. This is this is on this is associated with my file, so and it's in the same folder. So all I have to do is put the name of the page in. So now what we have is we have this. My second page. Notice it's blue because I haven't opened up this page in the browser yet. I can click on it, and now I'm on my second page. I can go, go back, and it's magenta again. Now I'm going to go, and I'm going to put a link back on the second page to go back to the first page. Just for completeness. And again, I just have to put in the name of the page. So I can go a link to go to the second page, I can go a link back to the first page. A couple things about links. One of the things is the text that you put inside your link tag ought to be descriptive. In other words, and let me give you an example. I'm going to go and change this. And this is something you probably have seen. Click here to go to second page. All right, so now with this, the word here is within the link. Therefore, that's the text that you click on to go to the link or go to the other page. Now, why is that a bad idea? It's a bad idea for a couple reasons. All right, first of all, it's a bad idea because if we had several of these, it might be confusing what here means. Like, let's say I'm doing research on a particular topic and there might be click here for article one, click here for article two, click here for article three. If all the links say click here, then it's going to be hard to remember for you, gee, which one was the good link that I want to go back to? You know, because the text of all those said click here. If instead you had click here for, or click for New York Times article, click for Washington Post article, click for The Economist article, then you can more easily remember, okay, the one that I want is New York Times article because that was part of the text. The other thing is, is people that use assistive technologies, for example, screen readers, like people that have impaired vision that use uh, some software that reads the screen to them, all right, uh, can benefit by having descriptive text because the screen reader will read the text to them. So if it's reading the list of links, if the list of links is simply here, 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 it's not going to be very effective and they're not going to know what to click on. But if instead the, the links uh, have meaningful names, then they'll know what they're getting by, by clicking a link. 
So the bottom line is, is have the text of the link be something that's meaningful. You know, it's a good memory aid for, uh, even for people that can even see the page, but for people that are using a screen reader, it's, it's essential in, in knowing what the links are. All right, questions about that. Um, there's one other kind of link that we're going to, to look at, and let me demonstrate how that works. This is something that you see in a couple different places. They, they often use this technique. This is often used with FAQ pages, and this is often used with like phone directories for an organization. Okay, here's a page for Stack Overflow, which is a popular um, resource for, for software developers. Notice what happens when I click on a link. All right, if I click on Etiquette, I don't go to a new page, I just scroll down to the section of the page about etiquette. So if I click on why are some posts removed? I don't get sent to a brand new page. All right. I instead I go to that section of the page. That's another kind of link. All right. That's another kind of link, and that's sometimes called an internal link or an internal anchor. All right. And those links work this way. All right. Let me go in and let me add. I'm going to add some contact info to the bottom of the page. I put a paragraph in, and I'm giving it an ID attribute. Oops, that should be a P. All right. We'll talk about what an ID is in a minute here. I could then go and I could put a link here. And notice what I did. I don't have the HTTP. This isn't a different web site not associated with me. I don't have the name of a file. I have pound sign something. And that something matches up with the ID of where I want the user to scroll to. All right. So let me go and save this. And let me bring it up in the browser. And I'm going to go make the browser window small so that we can't see everything all on one page because that kind of defeats the purpose of this.
you can imagine now there being more content on this page where, where my contact info had scrolled off the bottom of the page. If I then click on this link, I scroll so that that content becomes visible. So that link scrolls me down to where I can see the content that's visible. So that's the third kind of link that we're going to talk about today. There's a handful of other links. Uh, they, they may or may not be in the textbook at this point. I'm not sure. I know they're covered eventually. But link to send an email to someone. Um, and, and you can review those on your own. These are, these are probably the, the most useful three that, that we'll look at. Questions about this? Now, what's up with this ID? If you give something an ID, that means that you can link to that section of the page. So when, you, when we think back of this, this frequently asked question uh, file that we had up a minute ago, they could have had a separate page for every frequently asked question. All right? But that might be overkill. That might be hard to maintain. So what they did is they created one page, and they add just internal links. So if you click on something, you scroll down to get your answer. And again, you'll see that a lot with frequently asked questions. You also see it a lot with phone directories. So like, for example, it will show the letters of the alphabet on the top of the screen. And as you click on one of those letters, you get taken to that portion of the phone book. So like if a, if a company had 1,000 people, you know, um, you wouldn't have to sit there and scroll to get to the Zs. You could press the Z link and it would take you down uh, to there. So that's another way where, where oftentimes you see these, these internal anchors. So three kinds of links. All of them use the href attribute, but depending on the href attribute tells it whether it's a page out on the internet, another one of your pages, or a section of your page. For a page out on the internet, you need the HTTP first, slash, slash, and then the full address of the page. For one of your pages, you simply need the name of the page, provided it's in the same folder. And lastly, for an internal link, you simply need a pound sign and the ID. You can put an ID on just about every HTML tag. That's one attribute that you can put on just about anything. All right? And IDs are used for a number of purposes. This is just one purpose for which IDs are used for. You know, an ID, sort of as it implies, you know, points to just one place on the page. In other words, I can't have two things on the page, both of which are called, both of which have an ID of contact ID, uh, info. That wouldn't work. Just like your ID, your student ID, and your student ID number identifies you uniquely, the ID of an HTML element identifies it uniquely. So there can't be two that have the same ID. All right? It's like every other attribute, though. It's included in quotes. All right? And then when we link to it, we link to and we put the pound sign. That tells it, hey, it's not another page. All right, it is um, a section of this page. Now let's make some common mistakes. All right, let's make some mistakes on purpose. Let's say I forgot to put the HTTP for that link. All right, what's going to happen? Well, it's not going to work for one thing. If I click on it, it can't find the file. Essentially what it's telling me is because I did not put the HTTP in front of it, it's expecting to find a web page with the rest of my web pages called www.lorainccc.edu and so on and so forth. And therefore, it's not gonna, I'm not going to find it. I don't have a web page named that. Therefore, it will give me an error. Because right, it's looking for that page and it can't find it. If I do the reverse, if I put this in front of my page name for a page that is on my website, 
it'll also give me an error because it's looking for a website named second.html, not a web page named second.html. What do you suppose would happen if I don't put this pound sign in front of contact info? Not going to work, all right? What's it going to do? What's it going to try to do? Yeah, look for a folder or a file named contact info, which I don't have, and therefore it'll give me an error. Again, it looked for a web page on my folder called contact info, and it can't find it. So three different ways to distinguish the link. The rest of the link stays the same. Right? You have the start link tag that includes the href attribute. You then have the end of the start link tag. That's the whole start link tag. You have the less than sign a space href equals something. And that something is enclosed in quotes. Then you have the greater than sign and that ends the starting tag. You then have whatever text that you want to include here, all right? And then you have the ending tag. So that means you put Yeah, you could create a link to other kinds of files. Um, and what will happen is browsers are, are configured to handle certain kinds of files certain ways. So for example, if I made a link to a doc file, it would ask me, depend, you know, well, depending on the browser, it would ask me if I want to download it or open it. If I want to download it, it will download it and put it somewhere on my machine. If I want to open it, it will fire it up and open it within the application. So yeah, depending on the kind of file, the file extension sort of tells the browser how to deal with it. All right. Other questions about this? Let's see. We'll go over one more thing. We have five minutes. I hate wait. You know, I hate leaving extra class time. You know, you, if I got 50 minutes, you know, you're going to get at least 50 uh, minutes. So I have a couple minutes left. One thing I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, explain how to do, and um, it's kind of up to you how extensively you do that is putting comments in your code. All right, comments are are code that the the browser is going to ignore, but they're there for your purpose. They're there for the, for the creator of the document's purpose. What a lot of people do is they'll put comments at the top of the file that explains like who created it, on what day, and so on and so forth. The way comments work are like this. They start with the greater than sign, exclamation point, and two dashes. You then put in the comments, this was written by Mike Sellers. And then you end the comment with dash dash greater than sign. So let's say, for example, I want to put a note in here saying, these links were added on 1-29-2013. Now, that can be useful in documenting and, and if something goes wrong or, or whatever. In addition, you know, if you have some code that might be a little confusing or whatever, you can put explanatory remarks in there 
um, that, that, that just say what it is. And again, it's not for you, it's not for the browser's purpose. It's just sort of like indenting or leaving white space uh, in there. It's not for the browser's purpose. It's to give some explanation. Yes. Um, I don't really care. <laughs> some people don't like them. Some people that uh, don't. If we were, if I was teaching a Java class, for example, which I do teach, I would suggest in in if you're writing Java code to go in and put that in there because, again, that code can be a lot more complex and, and, and involved. HTML code is relatively simple. Um, as such, you know, you can comment it if you want, if you think it will benefit you, but I'm not going to, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to require it. Those of you that have done other programming probably have seen comments for other languages as well and, and, and know that they kind of serve the same purpose, but I would kind of say that they're probably more critical in, in other contexts. Questions about any of this? Yes? Um. The reason why is by default most browsers assume that even if you don't put it in. What that is is you know that there's a lot of different character sets in, in in the world, right? There's there's sort of the American English character set with A, B, C through Z. You know, if you look at some of the some of the Eastern European languages, for example, they have different um, different characters uh, in, in their language, like Cyrillic and all that. A lot of the Asian languages have different character sets because they don't use the, the English uh, um, character sets. So you can specify what character set your document was created in and is to be displayed in. Um, I didn't put that in there simply because, you know, I, I think that's, that kind of muddies the water. It, it, it's a little, you know, it could be a little confusing. Um, there's no harm to put it in, but if you leave it out, that's what a browser is going to assume anyhow. So you don't really need it for that reason. So for that reason, I didn't mention it. Other questions? The next thing we will do in next class is, again, as long as we're talking about HTML, it's going to be more and more tags, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the additional structural tags. Tags are used to identify sections of your page, all right? For example, navigation, article section. All right, all those tags are mentioned in the book and we'll talk about them and we'll talk about how to use them. There are ways to sort of divide your page into little areas, sections, divisions, and you can say what they're for. Um, that'll probably uh, take up most of the time next time, talking about those structural tags. Um, in addition, we will probably talk about list tags, so that if we want to represent a list of items, like a bulleted list or a numbered list, how we do that. All right. Other questions? All righty. We'll see you in lab.